Have you ever wondered what Adobe Camera Raw is good for? In this video, I'm going to show you how to start up Adobe Camera Raw and some easy ways to use it. Coming up. Hey everybody, this is Charles Cabrera, helping you get started with Photoshop, Lightroom, and photography. If you like short and easy tutorials, please consider subscribing and hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. Let's get started. So let's start off by launching Adobe Camera Raw. If you have a raw file from your camera, that's a file that uh, your camera has not processed. All the information about your photo is there in this raw file. And if you right click and on, in this case I'm on a Mac, say get info. What I want you to make sure is that the extension here, whatever it is of your raw file, it could be for CR2, could be like a Canon camera or ARW is a Sony camera, but make sure it says open with Adobe Photoshop default. You can change that here. That way, when you double click on it, it'll open in Camera Raw in Photoshop. Camera Raw is a plug-in piece of software in Adobe Photoshop. Camera Raw allows us to edit and enhance files from our digital cameras. You can also open up JPEG and TIFF files in Adobe Camera Raw. But this is what the Camera Raw interface looks like, very similar to Lightroom, that it has all these different sliders. So most digital cameras will allow you to take your photos in RAW and or JPEG file formats. So the RAW file contains unprocessed picture data for your digital image. Uh, Camera Raw can also open JPEG and TIFF files. Think about TIFF files and JPEGs. All the uh, things like brightness and color are kind of baked into the file, whereas the RAW file contains unprocessed picture data. One of the main advantages of editing a photo in Camera Raw is that the file is not changed, as opposed to if you edit it in Photoshop. It is a non-destructive way of editing your photo. So I have this photo open here in, in Camera Raw. If I make a change to any these sliders here in Camera Raw. If I say done down here and go to that file in the file system, you see that it's created another file right here. That file has all the information, the changes that I made. So if I go back in to Camera Raw, these changes are still there. All the changes are stored in another file as metadata. So if you delete this file and go back in, you've lost all the changes. But what you can also do is if you want to reset, you can hit Alt Option and the cancel turns into Reset button and that resets your file back to the way it was. So again, the original file is left untouched. So let's see some of the things that you can use Adobe Camera Raw for. You can use this auto here and if you want to actually get a start with some adjustment, you can see that Adobe Camera Raw has made a guess at what this photo should look like. Like I said, it's a starting point. You can come in and readjust things to your liking, but in another tool that you can use is the adjustment brush. Now this allows you to make adjustments in certain places. Like for instance, if I want to brush here and make the sky a little bit darker, I could do that. And if I say new, I have a new point that I'm going to make. And I can come down here and I can use any of these sliders here and change them. Maybe I want to make uh, the exposure a little bit higher, but or darken right here. Or if I want to lighten it up, I can lighten it up like that. When you hover over these points, it shows you where the adjustments made. If I want to create a new point down here, I say new. I can brush down here. Even after I brush, I can lighten it up and you can see it's lightening up the foreground. But that's the adjustment brush, which allows you to target certain areas of the photo. Now, if you don't want to use Lightroom to do this and you don't want to manage your photos at all in Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw is good to use because you can open up your raw photo from anywhere and make your adjustments and say done and you get out of Adobe Camera Raw. If you say open object, it will open it in Photoshop and it will be a copy. So if I say open object, it opens it up in Photoshop with all the changes that I made from Adobe Camera Raw. And I can change this photo in, in Photoshop, but the original photo is left untouched. This is now operating on a copy from your file system. In fact, now if you try and close this, it's going to want you to save it. So you're going to save another copy right here. And Camera Raw will work with JPEG files. So if I'm in Lightroom and I open up a file, now if I go up here to filter, it says Camera Raw filter. So I can open up Camera Raw from here and work on it and use any of these adjustments that I used from the a raw file. But now I'm operating on a JPEG. So you can still use Camera Raw on JPEGs or TIFFs, and you can bring it in Photoshop and still work on it. And if you say, okay, it's made those changes here. And so you may be wondering, well, why not do these changes in Lightroom? Well, not everybody uses Lightroom. And if you just want to get in and edit a raw photo and all you need is similar adjustments that are in Lightroom, well, this is a quick way to do it. And here you have lens correction. You can remove chromatic aberration, uh, enable, enable profile corrections. And here, this is a Sony camera. So you can see that it's applied the lens profile to this photo. So in this photo, another 
quick win for Adobe Camera Raw. You can use the white balance tool. In this case, this photo it was set to white balance fluorescent just for demonstration purposes, but you can use this eyedropper here. And if you do have a card like this to help you with white balance, it is ideal if you're taking a photo to do this first, or if there's some other point in the photo where it is, you know, almost white or 50% gray, something like that, that'll do. So with the eyedropper, just click and there we go. The white balance is corrected in Adobe Camera Raw. Another use for Adobe Camera Raw is the spot removal tool. So you could just click and it's getting rid of these spots here. Of course, you can move these around and get different angles, but this is something that's very helpful tool, especially if you need to get in somewhere fast and just get out a couple of spots. You can use it for blemishes, but here we're getting all this stuff off the sidewalk in front of this beautiful art. And something else kind of fun that you can do in Adobe Camera Raw is a panorama. So if I double click, on these images that I have highlighted. It's gonna open them all in Adobe Camera Raw at the same time. Now, of course, you can do this in Lightroom too, but we're just showing quick wins here in Camera Raw. I select all of them and go up to the top here. This is a film strip, so there's a menu here and it says Merged Panorama. Click on that and Adobe Camera Raw is merging all these photos into a panoramic view. I'm going to click this here where it says fill edges and all those edges down there are filled in. And when I say merge, it is going to come up with a dialogue that I can save that merged photo. So now it's on my file system and there is my panorama and I could adjust it here any way I want. If I want to change highlights, shadows, exposure, whatever I want to do to it. I can also say done and there we have it. And so another use of Adobe Camera Raw is creating an HDR. So I am clicking on these three exposures right here. And here they are in the film strip. And the top one seems to be in the middle somewhere as far as exposure. The middle one seems to be darkest. And then we have a real bright exposure. So if I highlight them all, come up here to the menu and say merge to HDR, merging HDR preview. Here is our preview right here. And we say merge again, as in the demo for the, the panorama, you, you could save a new raw file and there is our HDR. And we've got the full dynamic range and we can open it up in Photoshop if we want, or we could make any adjustments we want right here. And when we're done, we have a new raw file. So now to the question of the day. What do you think of Adobe Camera Raw? Are you gonna start using it more? Let me know in the comments below. If this video was helpful, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. If you want more short tutorials on Photoshop, click on the ones above. And remember, it's never too late to learn. See you in the next video.